Hello, can you hear me? Good evening to all of you guys. Dear student, can you hear me? Please write down in the chat box and I know you can hear me. Good evening to you, Mr. Asit. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> make sure when you come to the class. Uh, <laughs> okay. Mr. Asadullah Mahdi, um, please keep your micro microphone near, then you don't hear what's going on there. Uh, so, um, basically, Mr. <laughs> Ahmadi, <laughs> I'm Mr. Ahmadi, you could kind of hear what's going on there. Uh, we appreciate if you come to class to on mute mode. Okay, uh, today chapter four, we are going to discuss that. Uh, chapter four, well, the discussion starts with elasticity, as you can see here. Uh, so what's going on there? Let's go one by one. The objectives for this chapter will be um, define, calculate, and explain the factors that influence the price elasticity of demand. Define, calculate, and explain the factors that influence the cost elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand. And the same thing for factors that influence the elasticity of the supply. So we are going to more or less talk about the concept called elasticity today. Predicting prices. To predict the quantitative effects of changes in demand and supply, on prices and quantities, we need to know how responsive demand and supply are to price and other influences on buying plans and selling plans. More or less, this chapter is all about how we measure the response of demand and supply to price and other influences on buying plans and selling plans using the concept of last. As you can see, we want to see how much the quantity of supply or demand will change if you change the price. So today, everything will be more or less about this. Uh, specific concept. It explains how we calculate, interpret, and use elasticity. So look at here, uh, price elasticity of demand. In figure A, a change in supply brings a small increase in the quantity demanded and a large fall in price. As you can see here, we had S0 and it happened to be S1. So you had a little bit change in supply, so it caused you to have uh, definitely different demand because as you can see in equilibrium point which was in this dot um, this is when the supply was S0 then supply for any reason changed to S1 the equivalent from here comes to here that makes the price going from 20 to 5 which is a drastic change but the difference in quantity of demand is just 10 to 30 the reason why we have just this one is the shape of this uh, demand uh, function. If you go to another one here, the shape of demand function is different. So that's why a little bit changes in uh, price. You can see you have a significant amount of uh, supply change. Uh, sorry, demand change. You get here a price from 20 to 15, demand change from 10 to 17, which is significantly different. So this is exactly what we are going to discuss today. Shows how different items have more elasticity or inelasticity in, in, in uh, considering the price changes, okay? 
So in figure B, a change in supply brings a large increase in quantity demand and a small fall in price. Okay, this is what the whole idea of elasticity. So we're gonna explain this more, elaborate more on this. Because yes, price elasticity of demand. Let's explain it. The contrast between two outcomes in figure highlights the need for a measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for price changes. The difference that you have between last two charts shows that not all of the demands are going to be resp uh, responded or are going to respond to any changes in price the same way. If the changes in demand is going to be significant when the price changes, means that price is highly last, uh, uh, it has a high elastic demand. And if not, so we have inelasticity. So we're going to explain this more, more and more today and uh, try to be more clear on that. Price elasticity of demand, what is that? The price elasticity of demand is a unit free measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a good to a change in its price when all other influences on buyer's plans remain the same. As you can see, how you calculate this elasticity, this is the formula. The price elasticity of demand is calculated by using the formula, very simple formula here. The percentage change in quantity demanded divided the percent, uh, percentage, uh, percentage of change in price. As you can see here, we don't say it's a positive change or negative change. We just see the changes. So whether it's positive or negative, we don't really pay attention to that. We just see the percentage over the percentage, okay? So it's a unit free. That's why we call it unit free. That's what means it doesn't, the positive and negative is not gonna be really important. It's just about the changes. So let's go further. To calculate uh, the price elasticity of demand, we express the change in price as a percentage of average price, the average of initial and new price, okay? So we usually have average price means what was the price before, what is the new price now, what is the average, that is the average price, which is some of both of them divided into two. And we express the change in quantity demanded as a percentage of average quantity demanded the average of initial and new quantity. The same thing goes to quantity as well. If you have a new quantity and old quantity, the changes in quantity will, uh, the average in quantity will be both of these uh. quantity, some of these two divided to two. Uh. So let's go further. Look at here. Uh, the figure calculates the price elasticity of demand for pizza. You see when the price is 20.50 cents, US dollar, you will have nine pizza sold, okay? That's the original price. But the price initially is 20.50 and quantity demanded is nine pizza an hour. Let's see what will happen when the price changes. The price falls in 19.50 as you can see here. And the new point, which is the new quantity for price is 11. That means the, if you decrease the price, the basic demand Rule. When you decrease the price, uh, the quantity will increase, the quantity of demand. So that is what you get. 11 pizza an hour, okay, in this one. So the price falls by $1 and the quantity demanded increased by 2 pizza. You can see from 20.50 to 9.50, you have $1 decreasement in the price, but your quantity increases two units, which is two uh, pizza, okay? So we're gonna now calculate what we were talking about, price elasticity of demand. The average price is 20. You see 20.50 and 9.50, 19.50, the sum of these two divided to two is giving you 20. This is the average price. You remember we needed the average price to calculate the price elasticity of demand, okay? And the same thing goes to uh, quantity as well. The percentage, uh, the same thing goes to the demand. So let's calculate the percentage change in quantity demand, which we put it percentage difference between Q1, Q. That is the difference uh, that happened in quantity. Like what was before, which is this one, 
2 and what is now which is 11. Average quantity is 10. 9 plus 11 divided to 2 is 10 as you can see here. Okay. So let's calculate this. Percentage of quantity is calculated as quantity uh, changes divided to quantity average. Quantity changes is how much? 9 to 11 the changes is 2 and divided to quantity average. Quantity average what you said? 10. So 2 divided to 10 it gives you 1 out of 5 on 1 fifth. 1 fifth is the price elasticity of demand. Okay. So the percentage change in price we can do calculate. This is for uh, the first one is the percentage change in quantity demand, and we have to do the same thing for the percentage change in price. And dividing these two together, we give us the price elasticity of demand. So, if you look at the new price, which is 1950, and the old price, which is 2050, the difference is how much? Two, as you can see. Okay. As I told you before, again, we don't look at uh, negative or positive. We don't look at the increase or decrease. We just see the changes. Two unit changes. And on the other side, the average price is how much? 2.20.50 plus 19.50. It gives you 40 divided to 2. It gives you 20. 20 is the average. So if you want to calculate the percentage change in price, it would be percentage price divided to uh, price average. And it gives you 1 divided to 20. Very simple. You see one dollar decreasement divided to twenty average price gives you one out of twenty. So the percentage change in price will be one out of twenty. The percentage change in quantity demand will be one out of five. You remember for calculation of price elasticity of demand, we need to uh, divide one point five to one point twenty. This is how we can get price because the price elasticity of demand is the, uh, the percentage of changes in quality demanded divided to percentage change in price. So this is how the whole calculation is all about. The price elasticity of demand is 1.5. That was the top figure divided to 1.20, which gives you 4, which is our price elasticity of demand. Okay, and it's all calculated based on these changes that you have here and the information that you have. So this is the basic calculation that we had so far. Let's go further and elaborate on that more. Price, a price elasticity of demand by using the average price and average quantity, we get the same elasticity value regardless of whether the price rises or falls. That is what I was telling you, negative or positive. You don't pay attention to that. You just see that changes. So, if you look at the, um, the, the, the ratio that you just see, the ratio of two uh, proportionate changes is the same as the ratio of two percentage changes. The measure is unit free because it is a ratio of two percentage changes and the percentage cancel uh, out. So, we don't really look at the positive or negative and we just look at this, uh, the percentage difference. Uh, the changes, the units of measurements of uh, price or quantity leave the elasticity value the same. So uh, if you look at the, the previous ratio, you can simply see this basic flow. So the formula yields a negative value because price and quantity move in opposite direction. But is it the ma uh, magnitude or absolute value of the measure that reveals? How responsive the quantity change has been to a price change. Very simple. We don't really look that if the changes in price happen, the demand is going to be increased or decreased. We simply see how much differences in price will influence how much differences in demand. That's it. That makes this formula unit. So we don't really look at that. Basically, the um, positivity or negativity of this relationship, we just look at the basic thing that we call, um, as I just explained for you, the differences in quantity and size. So, inelastic and elastic demand. What do we call inelastic? What do we call elastic? 
Demand can be inelastic, you need inelastic, unit-elastic, or elastic, and can range from zero to infinity. If the quantity demanded doesn't change when the price changes, very simple. If the like, price change, but still you buy the same product, no matter how much the price is, means this, pro this product, the price elasticity of demand is zero, and the good has a perfectly inelastic demand. Means no matter how much the price fluctuates, the demand is the same. We call this perfectly inelastic demand. This is for products that they are actually vital for life. You use them no matter what. These products, even if the price changes, still you need to use them. That's why we call them inelastic demand. A very good example for this type of product is petrol. When the price of petrol uh, increases, still you need to have your car moving. For that reason, you still need to pump the gas, and that makes your uh, demand the same. So if these uh, differences in uh, changes in price doesn't influence at all the demand that you have for your car, that will go perfectly inelastic demand. But usually, uh, for something like petrol that I just told you, it's not necessarily like that. You, the, the increment in petrol may be influence your demand, but still you use it. It's not like if it goes very much, you don't use it at all. But products like, for example, just imagine pizza. If the pizza, you like pizza, and every day you're having pizza, but the price of pizza suddenly goes twice or go increase, your demand depend is going to be influenced. And so it means that the price of pizza is elastic. And so if changes in uh, price, demand, demand is going to definitely be influenced. Uh, yeah, so uh, what we see here, look at here, this is that price elasticity of demand that we're talking about. Figure illustrates a case of a good that has a perfectly inelastic demand and uh, has a vertical demand curve. As you can see here, no matter what the price is, still the demand is going to be that one that you have. Okay, because it's a perfectly inelastic demand. So it means it doesn't matter what happens with price, you're going to have inelastic demand. Okay, it's a perfectly inelastic demand. Then it's completely uh, straight up vertical. You may have this one, which is. Uh, Definitely different from a straight horizontal, but it's still having. If the unit, the percentage change in the quantity demanded equals the percentage change in price. You see, 12 to 16, 1 to 2. Okay. We call uh, the price elasticity of demand equals 1, and the good as the uh, unit elastic demand. Figure B, as you can see here. Illustrate this case a demand pair with ever declining the slope, with ever declining the slope, the step on the slope. And note that the demand curve is not linear. See, the linear is not linear, it's not a straight line, it's a curvy line. So, this curved line make it exactly a unit elastic demand. It changes in uh, price and changes in demand, the differences. Divide to each other is going to give you a one. It falls to one. Unit elastic demand. Okay. So if you see twelve to six, the difference we have six divided to the uh, basically average price, which is nine. And on the other side, you have one to two, changes one divided to average price is one point two t. So nine divided to six, and one point uh, is we give you. The same thing, 1.50. So the uh, the price elasticity of demand will be one. We call this elasticity one. The price elasticity of demand between the two previous cases, the percentage changes in the quantity demand is smaller than the percentages, uh, the percentage change in price. So that the price elasticity of demand is less than one, and the good has an elastic demand. But it can be vice versa. When you have elastic demand, when it's more than one, when it's more than one, we call it elastic demand. So it's less than one, we call it 
inelastic. If it's one, we call it exactly unit elastic demand. So we have unit elastic demand and we have inelastic demand and this is what we're going to now have this is inelastic uh, demand. So let's see what is inelastic demand. If the percentage changes in the quantity demand is infinitely large when the price barely changes, the price elasticity of demand is infinite and the good has perfectly elastic demand. A very good example for this is when you buy a product and the changes in that product make you to not buy that product very much anymore or significantly change the pattern of your purchase. That is called elastic demand. It is completely, it's like a little bit change, completely ch uh, change your demand. That we call it perfectly elastic. Look at this picture. B or C illustrate the case of perfectly elastic demand, a horizontal demand curve. As you can see, whatever the price was, uh, the price in 12. Is exactly the demand is going to no matter what is going to be this, but the price changes you may not have demand at all. So the, this is exactly means if the price is just twelve, you have demand. If you go less than that, there is no demand defined. Okay, as you can see, up or down. We call this perfect elastic demand, and it's completely uh, vertical, uh, basically horizontal. Okay, it's exactly what's the verse of that case I was told Here means in just twelve dollar, whatever it is, in the, for the price of that good, you have demand. And higher and lower you don't have any demand. So this is what we call a perfect elastic demand. But again, this is not a common thing. You have uh, so if the percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in price. The price elasticity of demand is greater than one, and the quantity has elastic demand. Very simple. If you want to see the calculation, what do you mean by elasticity? So you can see there is no difference in price. So you have the quantity changes, you know, in different points of this, over zero changes on price. That gives you. Something divided to zero, that something divided to zero gives you elasticity of infinite or infinity. Okay? So, for those that the, it's a basic mathematics, when you have anything divided to zero, it will give you infinity. Okay? And in previous one, which you had here just now, here, yes. Any changes in, you see here, you have. Zero changes of quantity when you have different changes in price. The demand is the same no matter what the price changes or not. That gives you the changes on quantity zero divided to anything. So zero divided to anything will give you zero as well. That's why elasticity here is zero and over there is infinite. So we were discussing just now this and now I'm going to go for this one price elasticity of demand elasticity along the strategic line demand curve. The figure shows how demand becomes less elastic as the price falls along a, a linear demand curve. When you have a linear demand curve with a straight line, okay, uh, this is what it happens. Let's further, you're going to show how demand becomes less elastic. Less elastic means it doesn't really. Uh, going to be influenced by the price changes. So no matter what, the demand is going to be less and less, like not really sensitive to price change. Look at here, at the price above uh, the mid point of the demand curve, demand is elastic. At this point, this is mid point of the demand curve. Twelve point fifty dollar, and you get twenty five pizza sold. On top of that. At any price on top of that, we say the demand, uh, the the price is above the mid price point. The demand curve is elastic. Means if we say change in the 
5. The quantity is going to be significantly being changed. And at prices below the midpoint of the demand curve, demand is inelastic. You can simply look at here. But here, for example, from 25 to 20, the price changed from 0 to 10. Like price could be 0 to 10, demand 25. Price 25, no demand. Price 20, demand goes to 10. That is shows elasticity. From 20 to 15, again the price change, uh, the demand changes from 10 to 20. In price 1250 to 50, you see the demand, the demand just changes between 20 to 25. And in this point exactly, this is the linear curve. So, and from, uh, as you can see here, from 25 to 30, the, uh, the price between 1250 to 10, if the, the drops to this, the quantity just changed 25 to 30. If the price uh, change from 10 to 5, you will have this much changes, and if it's 5 to 0, you will have this much changes, okay? So we're going to explain this more later on, you can see. For example, if the price falls from 25 to 15, the one that I just told you, 25 to 15 means from here to here, okay, from this point to this point. The price changes between 0 to 20, okay? The quantity demand, sorry, the quantity changes between 0 to 20. It's an hour, okay? And the average price is 20. Right, so between 25 to 15, the average price is 25 plus 15, 40 divided to 2, which gives you 20. Okay, so the changes is 10 divided to 20, 1, which is 1 divided to 2, half, and between price, as you can see, 0 to 20, average price is 10, the changes is 20, the 20 to uh, divided to 10 give you 2. So one divide one divided to two divided to two it gives you zero point twenty five or one fourth. Okay, so you see the price elasticity of demand is twenty out of ten, which is you will look at here. Uh, the the calculation I just told you is taking you I put the uh, changes in price on top, changes on quantity as on top. So wait again one more time I calculate zero to twenty. Is the change divided to average price 10 to so $20 divided to 10 gives you 2. Okay, and then in below we have changes between 25 to 15, the change is 20, and the average price is 20 to 25 to 15, the change is 10, the average price is 20. So 10 divided to 20 gives you 1 uh, divided to 2 or half, so 2 divided to half gives you 4. So the price elasticity of demand is equals to four. This is how we calculate it. Which is elastic uh, we call this elastic price. If you remember anything more than one, we call it elastic, and anything less than one, we call it inelastic. If you look at here, the changes are different. Now I'm gonna calculate something under the midpoint, which is this point. To prove why on top of the midpoint, anything on curve, linear curve is basically uh, elastic and anything under is mid curve midpoint of mid, uh, the curve is going to be inelastic so if the price falls from 10 to 0 price is this 10 to 0 okay so we have these changes right from this point to this point initially the quantity is how much 30 it goes to 50. So 50 minus 30 gives you 20 changes. Average price for these two is 40. So 20 divided to 40 gives you half or 1 divided to 2. This is on top of the whole ratio. And on the other side, you have the changes in the price as well from 10 here to 0. The difference is 10, average price 5. So 10 divided to 5 give you 2, 
So we had 0 0.1, uh, 1 divided to 2 on top, divided to another to here, it gives you 1 fourth. So 1 fourth is something less than 1, and we call this inelastic. Okay, here, the average price is 5, as you can see here, and the average quantity is 40, as you can see here. Okay, if you do that calculation, that you know the price elasticity of demand is 20 out of 40, divided to 10, divided to 5, which equals to 1 fourth. If you remember previously, we told you anything less than one is inelastic. Anything more than one is elastic. That's why we call it. lower than this midpoint on this linear curve is inelastic. On top of this midpoint on this linear curve, we call it elastic. So price elasticity of demand, if the price falls from $15 to $10, the quantity demanded increased from 20 to 30. Look at this, 15 to 20. Sorry, from 15 to 10. From 15 to 10. What is the difference? It's 5. What is the average price? 12.5. Okay. And as you can see, the demand is 20. It goes to 30. What is the changes? 10. Average price 25. So if we want to calculate what we we'll get, the average price is 12.50 as you can see here, and the average quantity is 25 as you can see here. So very simple, without looking the answer, 15 to 10, the changes is 5 divided to 12.50. Uh, this is the changes in price, and we have the changes in the quantity which is 20 to 30, 10 divided to 25. So 10 divided to 25 divided the whole thing to uh, 5 divided to 12.50. This is what you're going to get. Okay. 10 divided to 25 divided to 5 divided to 12.50. If you calculate this, you will get uh, this one, which is exactly this point. That's why we say this point is a mid section. In this mid section, mid point of the linear curve, the elasticity is exactly one, simply one, okay? Because the changes in quantity and changes in the price, if you divide these two together, they are the same, they are equal. Changes over average price of quantity, the changes of quantity divided to average quantity, divided to changes in price divided to average price, equals to one. This is what you get here. Exactly here. So price elasticity of demand. Um, I can see there are some certain things I want to see to read into the yeah. okay, total revenue and elasticity. The total revenue from the sale of a good uh, service equals to the price of the good multiplied by the quantity sold. That is the basic rule. Uh, how much revenue you make is how much you sell based on and how much you sell price of each item that you sell. Okay? So the number of sales you can multiply the price of each item that you sell give you the total revenue. When the price changes, total revenue also changes. That's a rule. If anything makes us to change, uh, cause us to change the price, most probably change us to uh, cause us to change the revenue as well. But the rise in price doesn't always include the total revenue. The total revenue is something else. And, uh, sometimes when you have the higher price or lower price, your quantity is going to be changed in a way that your total revenue sometimes increases or decreases. So you don't necessarily you cannot simply say if the price increase, I'm going to have better because I'm selling the same quantity, so more or less I'm going to have a higher demand. Most of the time, if the price increase, as you remember, demand for your product decrease, so that causes you to have lower number of products being sold. By the way, the price of each item is higher, but your total revenue is not necessarily high. That is what is written here. The rise in price doesn't always increase total revenue. So the change in total revenue due to the change in price depends on elasticity of demand. Very simple. If you have elastic demand, it changes 
I think price a little bit can change the demand drastically, or you have inelastic demand means changes in price, it's not really influencing the changes in demand. So you have different type of alpha. If demand is elastic, a person, a, a one person price cut in fees, the quantity sold by more than one person. Because it's elastic, all right? So if you change the price, the demand is going to be influenced. If you cut the price, the demand is going to be increased. So, and that more than one percent give you a better, higher revenue. Means if you cut the price a little bit, by the way, that you're decreasing the price, and still your revenue increases. It's very clear because your demands are increasing more than the price that you're changing. If demand is inelastic, means the changes in price doesn't really influence the quantity of demand. So a person price cut decreases the quantity sold simply because the quantity is not influenced by the demand and total revenue decreases. That is exactly what some of the with top situation. In top situation, the demand is elastic. The change in price change the demand. A one person cut may increase the demand more than one person. That causes the high the total revenue to be increased. In lower case, the demand is inelastic. The changes in price doesn't necessarily mean changes in demand. So if you cut the price, the demand doesn't really influence the total revenue. And if demand is utility uh, unitary elastic, means exactly one. A person price cut increases the quantity sold by one person, and total revenue remains unchanged. Very simple. You change. Here, uh, you are in exactly in a uh, point that elasticity equals to one. When one change in price, one change in demand. If you do that, the total revenue doesn't change. Right? That is the point that we call midpoint in that linear that we just explained. Okay, so let's go further. The total revenue test is a method of estimating the price elasticity. Of demand by observing the changes in total revenue that result from a price change when all other influences on the quantity sold remain the same. So we are now looking at the changes that you have in revenue. You are observing the total change in total revenue that result from a price change and all other influences on the quantity sold remain the same. So if a price cut increases, you cut more, total revenue. If the price cut increases the total revenue, demand is elastic. Considering the fact that demand is not going to be the so you consider the rest is not the same. If a price cut increases, you cry, uh, you uh, cut the price, but your total revenue increases, definitely means that demand is elastic. This is kind of vice versa of what we had just in previous slide. Here, we understand if you cut the price, and your total revenue is still increased, means your demand is changing drastically more than what your changes in price is. So means you have a elastic demand. And vice versa will be the case down. If a price cut decreases, means you cut the price and total revenue, uh, sorry, if the uh, if price cut decreases total revenue, means you cut the price, the revenue decreases, means Cutting the price, which is something positive, was supposed to increase the demand, doesn't really increase demand, means your probably your demand is not really elastic, it's inelastic. That's why you get demand is inelastic. And if a price cut leaves total revenue the same, most probably you have elasticity of exactly one, or we call it unit elastic. That midpoint that we just calculated means changes in one price. It changes just one quantity. So at the end of the day, uh, nothing changed to your uh, revenue. Your revenue will be the same. So price elasticity of demand, we get here. The figure shows the relationship between elasticity of demand for pizza and the total revenue from pizza. Okay. If you remember, in the midpoint on top, we have elastic demand. 
lower that midpoint which was here we had inelastic demand. So in the whole area from here to here to this point is inelastic demand. So the figure shows the relationship between elasticity of demand for pizza and total revenue from pizza in part which is shown here as the price falls from 25 to 12 to 15 25 as you can see here from 12 to 15 number here demand is elastic up to the point of 12 to 15 okay and total revenue increases when you decrease the price very simple because you decrease the price your demand increases more than what you decrease so you changes of uh, quantity of demand over the average demand divided the changes on price divided to average price is more than one it means your demand is elastic it means your revenue increases okay and we have this exactly unit elastic the point of 12.50 and 25 that changes are going to be changes over demand and changes over the price Going to be the same uh, at the 12.50 demand is unit elastic and total revenue stops increasing or decreasing. This is exactly because previously it was increasing, this point is stop increasing, here it starts decreasing. Okay, so let's go further. You can see here as the price falls uh, from 12.50 to zero, which is this level. Uh, demand is inelastic, as we explained, the total revenue decreases. Because the changes in the price doesn't really influence the demand, so the changes of demand over the average demand divided the changes of price over the average price doesn't give you something more than one. It means that your demand is inelastic. So price elasticity of demand. Look at here in part B shown here, as the quantity increases from zero to twenty-five. Quantity you can see from zero to twenty-five. Uh, demand in el is elastic, right? Because we were talking about that from zero to twenty-five, the demand is inelastic. In the previous picture, it was like that. Okay, zero, okay, to twenty-five pricing, and there is a point of twelve fifty. So if you look at that, you try to symbolize that on this this picture, okay. 0 to 25 and to 50. This is quanti uh, quantity actually. And this is total revenue. Revenue, if you remember, was the price multiple the quantity. Okay? The total revenue will be the price of the, how much you're selling each item and the quantity addition. In part, we shown here as quantity increases from 0 to 25, when you increase 0 to 25, your your gain is still, you're increasing your total revenue. And total revenue increases. Yes. At, at 25, as you can see, maximum total revenue will be there. And total revenue is at the maximum. At the quantity increases from 25 to 50, you don't make more money. You know, the revenue doesn't increase and actually it decreases. The demand is inelastic. And total revenue decreases. This is what we were explaining for you just now. When demand is inelastic, the price cost decreases total revenue. While when the demand is elastic, very simple reason again, when demand is elastic means changes in the price, changes the demand. So changes in demand multiple at the price because the changes in demand is more than the price cost, you'll have total revenue increase. It happened up to this point that the changes uh, of demand over the average demand divided changes of price over the average price for elasticity is one. After this point, the changes in price doesn't really influence your demand, means your demand is inelastic. But at this point, if we decrease the, point, uh, decrease the price lower, you don't get more revenue. You're actually decreasing your total revenue. So your expenditure and your elasticity. If your demand is elastic, a one person price cut increases the quantity you buy by more than one person and your expenditure on the item increases. So very simple. Now we're gonna talk about expenditure. 
side of the whole uh, elasticity. If the demand, your demand is elastic, it changes in the price, changes the demand. The price cut increases the uh, one percent price cut increases the quantity you buy. So for example, you buy more quantity because the price is lower and more than one percent, and your expenditure on item increases because you're buying more. The expenditure goes higher. If your demand is inelastic, a person price cut increases the quantity you buy by less than one percent. So, and your expenditure on the item decreases. So, if the you see the demand is inelastic, which changes in the price doesn't really influence the demand. So, if the person price cut a uh, one person price cut happen, your quantity uh, increase or less than one. So, that causes you to have uh, less expenditure. Very simple. This is another way of saying what you just explained from total revenue perspective. This is expenditure side. And if your demand is unit elastic, the first thing, price cut increases the quantity by 1% and your expenditure on the item does not change. So the factors that influences the elasticity of demand, uh, the elasticity of demand for a good depends on all of these. Closeness of substitute, sometimes you have more substitute, definitely uh, these factors are influencing the elasticity of demand. If the substitutes are very near and close, most probably uh, if they change the price changes, then definitely that definitely influences the elasticity of demand. The uh, proportion of income spent on the good, the time elapsed since the price change, and all of those things. So, we're going to explain how a closeness of substitute, how it uh, influences the elasticity of demand. It closes the substitute for a good or services, the more elastic is the demand for it. That is the fact. So, if you have lots of substitute around, the higher elasticity the demand is, because uh, if the price changes, so I definitely don't buy, if the price increases, why should I buy that uh, product anymore? I go for substitute easier. But necessities such as food or housing that you are actually must for your life, no matter how much they increase, still you need to have something to eat. If the price of the food goes drastically high, a city cannot simply say that I'm not going to have the food anymore. So still your eating will be there. That generally have inelastic demand. That's why we put them under the inelasticity demand or inelastic demand simply because they are vital goods or services. Luxurious products usually are elastic. It means the price in luxurious product goes up, you don't buy it. Like for example, gold price goes up, why do you have to buy gold? There's no point to buy gold anymore. You are not forced to buy gold. Why should you have to buy gold? Okay. So luxuries such as exotic uh, vacation uh, generally have elastic. If you have, for example, just imagine you used to go to Turkey for your vacation, and it was kind of very economical and possible. But uh, recently, the price of airlines and also the, uh, maybe hotels they all increased. So most probably you can easily take a rain check on your travel simply because it's not really worth it. The demand definitely is going to be influenced by the price. So if the price is going up, definitely you want to stop doing that. We call this uh, elastic demand. The portion of income is spent on the good. The greater the portion of income customers spend on the good, the larger is the elasticity of demand. So if you are spending so much on a certain product, so you are more concerned. Very simple. If every month you just buy uh, maybe out of your whole, for example, salary, uh, for example, one hundred dollars spending on certain product, means for example, if your salary is four thousand or five thousand dollars a month, and you're just spending one hundred dollars of your salary on certain product, if the price changes, doesn't really influence your purchase because you're not really affected by that price change. But if you're buying something very much, like rice or like bread or things that every month you buy and you're spending so much, but these items are not really expensive. We're talking about items that are significantly expensive. If the changes in that, 
is increased, definitely your demand is going to be your elasticity of the demand is increased. Uh, or if so, the greater the portion of income comes from the spend on a good, the larger is elasticity. So you will be more sensitive to price changes. We are spending more money on that specific product. This is what does it this mean actually? So the uh, what this actually means was uh, the very basic thing that I just explained. Price elasticity of demand. The time elapsed since the price changes. The more time consumers have to adjust the price change, the longer or the longer that a good can be stored without losing its value, the more elastic is the demand for that product. So if you can delay your purchase or you can store that item, why not you do it? If the price changes, you try to delay it as much as you can, you maybe reach to a better point that you can spend more or that price may be changed. So definitely, if time elapsed since the price change is uh, long, then a higher chance for you to have uh, elasticity in your demand. Now just imagine you have a kid and your kid needs milk, and milk is something that every day you have to go by. You don't really have time to see next month what will happen. Every month you have to go, every day you have to go and get it for your kid. That means you don't really have time. If it's price change, you cannot wait for the next change because your kid needs that. So that is elasticity of demand. More elasticity of demand. Cross elasticity of demand. Cross elasticity of demand is a measure of the responsiveness of demand for a good to change in price of a substitute or complement, other things remaining the same. So the formula for calculating the cross elasticity is percentage change in quantity demanded divided the percentage change in price of subsidy or company. You remember we were doing this uh, elasticity formula for our brand and our formula was percentage change in quantity of demand and percentage change in price of that product. But here we are looking at subsidy or complement. I want to see how changes in their price influence our demand. If you remember previously we said if the uh, price of our substitute increases the demand for our product increases. If the price of our complement increases, the demand for product decreases. Or if the price for the substitute decreases, the demand for our product decreases. If the price for the complement decreases, the demand for our product increases. This is a different way of saying that. So we can look at the percentage and see the elasticity for cross elasticity of demand. So the cross elasticity of demand for a substitute is positive. The cross elasticity of demand for a complement is negative. Very simple. Because substitution, if uh, the price for them is increasing, uh, you most probably try to buy the product more. But your substitute is high, why not you buy more? And if the price for the your complement increases, your price for uh, your demand for your product decreases. That's why you got positive demand. So more elasticity, uh, elasticities of demand. The figure shows the increase in quantity of pizza demanded than the pizza, uh, pizza uh, the price of a burger. You see, usually pizza and burgers are going to be considered soft pizza. So if you are eating pizza, uh, your another fast food that you can have in soft pizza can be burger. So if the price of the burger increases or decreases, definitely influences the purchase of pizza as your main product. Price of a burger, a substitute rises, but then most most probably you want to have higher elasticity for your positive cross elasticity. Means most probably you're going to have higher quantity of your product. Means uh, because your substitute price is increases, the chance of you buy that substitute is decreases, so you buy your product with pizza more. That's why you can see demand for the product for the pizza from D0 go to D1, but the price of price of the burger, which is the subsidy increase. So people tend to not buy burger anymore and buy burger, uh, pizza more. That shows what I will just explain for you. The figure also shows the decrease in the quantity of pizza demanded than the price of a soft drink, a complement pizza. Usually just imagine you have your pizza with the Coca-Cola, a can of Coca-Cola, a can of Pepsi. If that one increases and you like to have your pizza definitely with that, the most probably the chance of you buying the 
pizza is less because your complement is increased. So, but um, drink is definitely have influence, but not that much drastic. But still, you may say, I buy my pizza without having a can. I just imagine you're one of those people that really see a drink of Coca Cola carbonated drink as a necessity. Uh, necessary actual requirement for having pizza. Some people love to have pizza with drink, uh, like Coca Cola, carbonated drink. That means if they decrease the price for the complementary product, which is kind of Coca Cola, increases, your demand for pizza decreases. Okay? That is what you can see here. From here, you go to here, the price of the soft drink, the complement rises, negative, cost less, you will have. Also, lastly, if you remember, was the changes on quantity of your product purchase. When the changes the price in, uh, happen in price of your complement for supplements. So, income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand measures how the quantity demanded of a good responds to the change in income, other than things being uh, equal. So, income elasticity of demand. As you can see, we are monitoring on the income elasticity of demand measures how the quantity demanded of a good response to changes to change in income, other things being equal. The formula of calculating the income elasticity of demand is this. As you can see, the income elasticity or cost elasticity demand formula, all they're going to have the same basic fundamental principle, the percentage change in quantity demanded, but this part is going to be changed, percentage change in income. So we want to see how if your income changes, your quantity or demand changes. So if income elasticity of demand is greater than one, means the demand is elastic, demand is income elastic, and the good is a normal good, means the higher your income, the more you buy from that product. Okay, like for example, uh, you have food, food is a normal product, you have higher income, you, have, you buy more uh, food. But if the income elasticity of demand is greater than zero but less than one, means it's inelastic, demand is income. Income elastic and the good is a normal is a normal good. So this is again normal good, but when the income, as you can see, uh, still is uh, positive, but it's more than zero, less than one. If the income elasticity of demand is less than zero, means the changes in demand over the changes of income is less than a zero, means negative. The good is an inferior good. So you buy the good product if you don't have money. If you have money, you never buy that product. Very simple. Normal bread that every day you buy is a post bread. This is a basic, basic normal bread. If you have mon enough money, you buy that. If you don't have money at all, you may buy and buy some traditional, uh, not less, with less quality product that is an inferior good. You would not buy this if you have enough income. And you buy this because you don't have really money, real money in your mind, enough money in your pocket. So that's why inferior goods are those products that you have, uh, as you can see, income elasticity of the amount is less than zero or negative. The simple reason is the changes in demand uh, is going to be less than or less than zero. And it, because the price in uh, the product is going to be uh, your demand, the, the, the payment of your income is more than less than what the price is. So, you have to go for some product that is going to be very, very cheap or inferior. Inferior product is less than normal. Something that you don't buy if you have enough money. You buy it when you don't have money at all. Okay? Very cheap product. Price elasticity of supply. We can have all of these uh, arguments and explanations that we have just now. There's something called uh, supply. And uh, as you can see here. So, in figure A, a change in demand brings a small increase in the quantity. Demand will be zero. 
and change, uh, from B0 we change to B1. This is the supply uh, linear curve, the straight line. So demand used to be uh, price used to be 10, demand used to be 20, the price is 13. You see, and supply is higher. And but we had this previous to this an income and demand good. So you have a higher income. And brings a small increase in the quantity supply and larger rise in price. As you have more money, you buy, if you larger price from 20 to 30, the quantity is just 10 to 30. You have the same. Yeah. Less changes in quantity, while higher changes in price. Means the demand is really inelastic. We call this kind of demand. So in figure a change in demand brings a large increase in the quantity. You see, demand from here, the income increases. Uh, so you demand from here went to here, but uh, uh, and that income changes causes you to have a greater quantity or a small change of in price. So a little bit change, higher changes in the quantity. The change in demand brings a large increase of the quantity supply and a small rise in price. So this is the elastic demand. The contrast between the two outcomes in the figure highlights the need for a measure of the responsiveness of the quantity supply to price change. So if you see from here to here, the change will cause you to have significant, significant amount of quantity demand increase in treatment while it's uh, the price in this was a very small mine. So, the elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of the quantity supplied to change in the price of a good when all other influences of the selling plan remain the same. Now we're going to calculate whatever we have been calculating so far for demand for something called supply. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Najula? Say, cannot hear me. So all of those uh, formula that we had for demand, now we're going to apply it for supply and see uh, the responsiveness of quantity of supply to change in the price of a good when all other influences on selling time remain the same. Okay. The elasticity of supply is calculated by using this formula, percentage change in quantity supply and percentage change in price. So if you remember how we calculated this for demand, we said the changes in demand divided to average demand divided to the percent of changes in uh, price divided to uh, average price, percentage of that. And it was giving us a ratio that that ratio showed that demand is elastic or inelastic. Let's see for supply how it works. The figure on the next slide shows three cases of elasticity of supply. Supply is perfectly inelastic, means the changes in the price doesn't really influence the supply. So means we just supply in certain price. No, we supply in the certain quantity, no matter what the change is. Okay, and uh, the, the, in that point we call it. Perfectly inelastic means different prices. Supply is going to remain the same, so you're going to have a horizontal line. Okay. Uh, sorry, in the different prices, uh, so uh, you're going to have a vertical line. Means different prices, you're going to have a vertical line. Means different line, no matter what the price is, still you're going to have a vertical line. We call this uh, elasticity. Supply is zero because the changes. Uh, in quantity of the uh, in uh, supply is zero divided to whatever the price changes, so that gives you a, a elasticity of zero. Supply is a unit elastic. You remember exactly we done this with the, for the demand as well. The supply curve is linear and passes through the origin. Note that the slope is irrelevant. We're gonna now uh, go further on and look at that 
and supply is perfectly elastic, and you have actually a horizontal line means in certain price you have supply and nothing else. That's it. Means uh, if the price goes higher or lower, we definitely we don't have uh, supply at all. That is a perfect elastic supply, and the horizontal is the supply is infinite because the changes in supply over the changes in the price is something on zero. So that makes you uh, infinity in supply line. Look at here. This is what we are talking about. This is when we have elasticity of supply zero because if it changes on quantity is zero divided to any changes on price. So it gives you a zero divided to uh, anything. So it gives you elasticity of zero. It's a perfect elastic it's an actually perfectly inelastic uh, supply. This is when you have uh, a unit elastic, which is the changes in this and changes in that percentage are the same. You have a straight linear curve, and you have this, which is uh, we call it perfectly elastic line. It means the price is a little bit high or a little bit low. There is no supply. Exactly, supply is going to be the just in this. The changes in supplies over zero changes of price give you elasticity of supply equal to infinity. So elasticity of supply, uh, the fact that, that influences the elasticity of supply, like exactly what we explained for demand, uh, but the practices are different. Elasticity of supply depends on resources, substitution, possibilities. The easier it, it is to substitute among the resources used to produce a good or services, the greater its elasticity of that supply. Very simple. You see, if you can substitute the resources that you're using, if uh, means that uh, that product is going to be very sensitive to the, you know, it's going to be uh, definitely have the highest elasticity because if the price changes, definitely you can make more money. Because you can simply, if the resources are not available, still you can use other resources. But the time frame for supply decision as another fact is another factor, and you see how the it works. The more time that the passes after price change, the greater is the elasticity of supply. Again, if uh, when the price changes, uh, time as time passes, you may have more supply. On the changes of price, so you definitely have higher elasticity of the price. Means price changes, you have more supply. The changes in supply is going to be more over the time. So time is going to be an important factor as well. And the last one will be the time frame for supply decision. The more time that passes after a price change, the greater is the elasticity of supply. My monetary supply is perfectly inelastic. The quantity supply immediately following the price change is constant. So we're talking about the quantity that you may get out of the, uh, the price change, and usually it's monetary supply, which is perfectly inelastic. You remember, if perfectly inelastic price means the changes in price doesn't influence the quantity. So when talking about supply, perfectly inelastic supply will mean different in changes, different in price, it still doesn't matter. We will have a perfectly uh, uh, vertical constant uh, supply. Short run supply is somewhat elastic. Long term, long run supply is most elastic. Uh, we are talking about uh, time and the influence of the time for supply decisions. So the higher the time is, the more you, you have the chance of figuring out how the price influence the supply, so you can have uh, definitely that influence seriously. So that if uh, if the price increases and you have more time, okay, uh, if you have more time to make decisions and the price changes, so your definitely supply also changes. If you really don't have that much time, the price changes. Uh, your demand, you never know whether you have to. Uh, maybe the price, the, the changes in the uh, supply is not going to be as fast or as much as the price changes because you don't really have time to figure out what is the right decision to make. That definitely influences the elasticity of supply. So this is why we said that time can influence the elasticity of supply. 
and that's all about it. So uh, now uh, this is open for any question. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any question? You see, as I told you, the these classes, uh, business economics, is um, they're going to be different from leadership and internal marketing simply because uh, the concepts are more complicated and detailed. You should have a basic background about economics to be able to grasp everything that is going to be discussed. But it's still, that there is an opportunity to understand the whole thing if you have some previous. Before coming to class, you have some studies, as well as the point that um, uh, if you come to the class from digging up points and not missing the first part of the class, then you have higher chance of understanding the whole. So please let me know if you have any uh, question. I hope that my explanation was enough and uh, understandable. Okay, thank you, Mr. Asad Rally and Mr. Asif. Um, Mr. Nadi Shuku, you asked it before. Uh, unfortunately, no, I don't have any ebook. But I do believe that uh, the, they may have it in the. You can, you can contact the. At me, they could have this from the previous lectures that they have been teaching this. They might have this before and they might share it before, so you may get it from there. Thank you so much. I hope that it was understandable and you could understand the whole. Uh, idea of how elasticity works and things like that. The same thing is an idea. Please contact uh, WWS. Most probably they have a ebook uh, which was shared properly by the previous uh, lecture. Uh, because I do believe uh, there has to be something there. Unfortunately, for myself, I don't have any. If I had, I would definitely give you a link or I would send you materials to your email, but unfortunately, I don't have it. So, please do that. So, anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, thank you all for attending the class uh, and your attention. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Ali and all of you guys. Have a good night and see you next week. Sweet dreams to you as well. Good night.